So Ubisoft recently put out their Starlink game, which they say is going to be the thing that uh, revives and saves the Toys to Life model, but here's the thing. It took them exactly zero days to mess that up, and uh, because here's the thing. You don't actually have to buy any of the toys in order to beat Starlink. In fact, you're better off not buying any of the toys for Starlink because there is a digital edition of Starlink that comes with all of the toys already unlocked for either $15 less or $5 more. Starlink is a new Ubisoft game that purports itself to be Toys to Life. The game is an open world romp with a ton of uh, random side quests, unfulfilling mini dungeons, and of course, tons and tons of wide open space. You know, a Ubisoft game. <laughs> Despite the fact that you're technically flying a spaceship, you actually spend most of the time hovering above the ground. You know the ghosts in the Halo games, if you've ever played one of those? They control kind of like that. There was actually a time where I was going to, you know, say some nice things about Starlink. Talk about uh, how the game works and how this controller-based design, despite how silly it works, is actually kind of ingenious because in order to, uh, you'd think that in order to swap uh, the pieces of a toy, you'd have to take the toy in one hand and the weapon in the other to detach it, but since it's mounted to controller, you already have a hand on it, so you just, uh, while you're in the middle of gameplay, you just kind of pop and pop to swap weapons, so it's actually a pretty straightforward process, but like I just said, these toys are now completely pointless, so... I don't know how many positive things I can say about it anymore. They basically nullified any praise I was going to give the game with this whole digital release thing. So yeah, there's a digital release of the game. You have your regular edition and you have your deluxe edition. The regular edition comes with five ships, seven pilots, and 12 weapons, and the digital deluxe edition comes with everything unlocked. All the pilots, all the ships, all the weapons for just $20 more. The regular digital edition contains everything you need in order to beat the game for 15 bucks less than the physical starter pack. Why did they do this? They have gone ahead and basically nullified their entire product line with this single gesture. You are in fact incentivized to buy the digital edition because it's so much cheaper. Didn't I just do a video that mentioned the dangers of competing with yourself? And here's the thing, the way I learned about this was actually from the store manager of my local GameStop. I popped in and said, uh, you know, hey, how's Starlink doing? And what he said was, well, it's not really selling at all. And I actually heard a rumor that it's because there's a digital version of the game that comes with everything unlocked. And I was like, well, that doesn't make any sense. And he was like, yeah, but it's the only thing that would explain the fact that nothing is selling. So. I looked it up on the spot, and lo and behold, there it was, the digital edition on Switch. I've gone and looked it up later. There's also a digital ed d edition on X-Bone. I assume there's also one on PS4, and he was infuriated. I was infuriated, because it means that any store that bought the physical merchandise, it is doomed to rot there. So, basically, Ubisoft is like, oh, we'll just have our cake and eat it too. We'll release the physical toys and the regular toys, and people will be happy and blah, ha, ha. But no, people are going to buy the digital game if they care at all, and they're not going to buy the physical game, so these things are doomed to rot and go on clearance. And now that's just a fine way to treat your business partners, isn't it? Because, I mean, I'm a little upset because it does feel like I was kind of cheated for buying the, the uh, regular full edition of the game, when there's a version out there that is not only cheaper, but has more content in there. And I also feel bad for all of my local game and electronic stores who bought into it, because I actually care about these people. This GameStop store manager I was talking about, he's actually a really nice guy, always willing to strike up a conversation, always willing to make recommendations. I have never seen him get frustrated like this before. And like I said, it doesn't bother me as much. I mean, I'm, I'm a toy review guy. I was probably gonna have to review these anyway, but the way that Ubisoft has completely messed this game up, just, you know, right out of the gate. <sighs> so much for being the savior of Toys to Life. I, I, I'm wondering if all the people who are saying, you know, posting, saying, oh, Starlink is going to save Toys to Life, are being sarcastic, because that's all I can assume they are now, because this is not going to save Toys to Life, especially since there is no reason to buy it. To be honest, 
I've been playing this game and it doesn't really feel like it needs to be a Toys to Life game because aside from switching the weapons to match particular elemental challenges like there's certain crystals that can be only, only be broken by certain weapons and there's certain puzzles that can only be activated by certain weapons otherwise I don't really feel like it should have been a Toys to Life game at all like the people who have bought the physical editions I guess because they don't know about the digital editions are buying like the starter set one pack of weapons the, the pack of weapons that contains this gun here because it's the only way to get a dark weapon and nothing else they're not really buying the ships and they're definitely not buying the pilots especially the people who bought the switch edition the people who bought the switch edition would just buy the weapon packs and uh, that's it and speaking of these weapon packs uh ubisoft is more than happy to sell you these weapon packs as dlc as well you can buy the data for half the price it costs at the store why did they make this Oh, that's, that's just insane. And I'm looking at other games. Other Toys to Life games have had digital releases, but they specifically refer to them as, you know, the portal owner's pack. If you already have the starter pack from game one and you just want to start buying the figures from the new game, you can just buy this digital download and skip having to buy another big old bulky starter pack. That's how, that's how the digital downloads for Toys to Life games Ha have always worked and I have I have never seen a Toys to Life game that just says oh you can by the way you can just skip all the toys by buying the digital version that to do that on launch day that is just incredibly foolish I mean even Light Seekers wasn't that bad off you could pay you could play Light Seekers without the toy but the toy at least did something that the digital game didn't do I can't say the same for Starlink so so yeah, I've played some Starlink a little bit. I, I'm okay at it, although I do spend an awful lot of time making pizza jokes because look at the shape of their spacecraft. It's a giant pizza cutter. So like I said, uh, yeah, it's not a Toys of Life product anymore because there's a cheaper, better edition. Why, why did they do this? I, 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 I didn't really manage to get to reach out to them for comment, but I can only imagine what kind of justification they would have for doing something this stupid. Do they not understand how Toys to Life is supposed to work? The, the idea of Toys to Life is that the toys are the content. And, and to top it off, they, they brag about how this game has couch co-op, but you can't really have couch co-op in this game because it only comes with one ship and one controller mount. You would have to spend... $25 getting another ship and another $15 special ordering a controller mount. That's 40 bucks if you want to do couch co-op in a Toys to Life game. And that's the thing about Toys to Life games is a lot of them are things that families use as a bonding activity. So the, uh, the most other Toys to Life games with basically the exception of Disney Infinity 1.0, which they immediately fixed, is that all of them have out of the box co-op capability. They have enough parts in there that you can have two people playing at once. But like I said before, that's besides the point because Starlink Digital Edition makes the toys completely pointless and it also has free co-op. You don't have to pay the 40 bucks to co-op a second game. And I mean, especially bad for the Switch version because if you want to have an R-Wing Wingman, you have to buy the game twice. But uh, yeah, Starlink is dumb. Ubisoft is dumb. And it is definitely not going to bring back Toys to Life. I'm sorry, you guys. So this is Starlink by Ubisoft. And until next time, this is Kodak signing off. This is the final stand. The power's in your hands. Two worlds collide on the inside. You gotta fight for what's right before it's gone, gone, gone.